we're recording now. And and welcome, uh, 14th so far. That's pretty good given a class of 20. Um, with people that we knew that are going to be gone. It's so great to actually see some of you live. I've met a couple of you live so far. Most of it's just been watching your videos. A couple of people I've been able to Zoom with, and that's been pretty nice. Um, so uh, let's see. Are we done here? Yeah, I put the cat away outside so he can't bother us. My son knows not to play video games right now. He's home because he was exposed to COVID, but uh, he doesn't have it. He has to stay home for a day, but he promised not to play Dota or any other online games or anything like that. So we won't lose bandwidth there. So we should be we should be good to go. OK, um, we're going to talk a little bit today. I'm going to switch cameras here so you have a, a notepad that you can look at. And I'm going to uh, try and balance our class to do maybe two and a half or three things. Uh, the first thing we want to do is we want to talk about we want to talk about scales and triads, which is really just chords, right? And you spend a lot of time learning how to spell triads, lots of time, and people are doing great at that. I'm super impressed with the results that are coming in. Triads is just one kind of chords. Chords are multiple notes sounded at one time that give us our harmonies. And, and recently you've been working on scales, uh, major scales, right? Okay, and so what we wanna do is we wanna sort of tie these two things together so you can see how they interact and maybe some things you can do with them. It's a nice trick, and it's not a trick, it's a good thing to be able to spell a triad or to spell a scale. But when you start to understand how they interact together to create a world for music to live in, then it becomes much more powerful. It will also require you to go one more level deep to understand um, like how to spell scales. For instance, if I said to everybody, and, and if you want to flood the chat, or if you just want to grab your own piece of paper, except for one person I saw was driving, don't do that. You can just, if you're driving, stay safe, of course. But if I said to you, how do you spell an F major scale, right? There's a couple ways you could do that. So if you have a piece of paper, or you just want to say it out loud, commit, and you know, your microphone will be off, but spell an F major scale or describe an F major scale. And hopefully you're ready for testing on this today. I'll give you just a moment, okay? You can even flood the chat if you want, but, but give yourself five seconds before you do that so that um, you don't spoil the answer for anybody else, but commit. So you could have said one flat, B flat. Right, and that's true, but you also need to know that you're going from F to F, one note at a time, okay? And when we're doing this live, um, I like to go like this. Uh, well, literally, hold on. I'll show you how I spell my scales. Um, here's how I do this. If we were live, I'd absolutely make you do this in class because kinesthetic learning is good. But if I was gonna say, let's spell an F scale, here's how I do it. I'd go like this, F, <laughs> B flat, F, that's it. What that means to me is that I'm going, I'll, I'll do it really slow motion for you. Hold on, I'll do it again one more time. F, B flat, F, like that. And if we slowed that down afterwards, if you, if you want to, if you can get the, the video and slow it down to not just half time, but maybe like quarter time, what you'll see that I did really quick there is I went like F, G, A, B flat, C, D, E, F, right back in real time, right? Because in my head, I'm doing two things. One is that I'm going F to F, right? And the other one is I've got a little tiny invisible person right here going, when you get to B flat, I'm just going to jump on and put a flat there, right? We have the Easter bunny, we have Santa Claus, we have all these avatars of holidays, but there's some music avatars and there's the avatar of flats and the avatar of sharks. And they just sit around with a bucket of paint and sprinkle these things out when they need them. Okay. But that's how I do that. Now, going back to here, and that's good, by the way, if you can do that, boom, let's try that with the G scale. So G scale in your head, you're thinking, oh, that's got one sharp and that sharp is F sharp. And at parties for tricks, you could say, I'm going to go G, <laughs> stop at the F, right? Let the little fairy of sharps on your shoulder or imp or dragon or whatever 
get out and put a sharp there and then you get back on the road and you just right there it's like having to stop for gas just before you get home right and just put that on there right and if you slow it down you're going like g a b c d e f sharp and g okay that's one level of knowing scales and today at the end of the class you go into break rooms and you're going to do c major uh f major b flat major and e flat major those are the first three flat scales and you're going to test each other and also um g major and a major oh i guess we'll put them in order e major and a major and you'll describe them for each other uh like on your flashcards my flashcards are green just from an earlier iteration uh but yours are blue and you'll want to have those flashcards separate probably to test each other or you could have a list, but you're gonna to wanna to have answers, okay? Uh, see me cleverly helping you review this, by the way, as we do this. Okay, that's one level of knowing scales. But once we have that, um, we can talk about what that means. Scales are like, well, it's a set of notes, right? And we put sharps or flats in places where we need to, to make sure that they have the right distance between the notes. So I'm gonna play, my F scale for you. There's an F and then a G and then an A and then a B. And if you're listening really carefully, you'll hear that it's like there's two half steps between the F and the G. And then between the G to the A, there's two half steps there, right? But between the A and the B flat, right beside each other there's two places in the major scale or the scales that we're learning where there's half steps and it's between notes one two three uh, four it's between notes three and four and then five six seven eight or one again it's between there and there right all of the other notes have a whole step between each note and the other ones have a half step and when i say whole step i mean two piano keys or two frets on your instrument, and a half step is just one, okay? So the reason we have these flats and sharps is to alter the notes to move them around so they sound the same. So if I play my C scale, right? Although it starts in a different place because the distances between the notes are the same, it sounds like the F scale that I just played. And that would sound like a G scale that I could play. So. Or a D scale, right? They all sound the same because the distance between the notes is the same because of the sharps and flats. And where those half steps are help the, the, the chords that are built out of them and the melodies that are built out of them. We use these notes as a set to build our scales, our, 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 sorry, our melodies and our harmonies, uh, give us a sense of home or finality in a way. So for instance, let's see, I'm gonna keep flipping pages here. Actually, I think I'm gonna bring in, I think I'm gonna bring in some staff paper. I hope that that's not, no, I'm gonna switch to a screen so you can see. Let's share a screen and we'll go to finale. Okay. And I'm just going to add another measure. And if I were to use the C scale, which is no sharps or flats, right? And I were to write this, and I'm just going to use basic rhythms right now, both like this. Oops. And then. All right. And let me put this all back on screen together so we can see it in one place right there. And can you hear it? I hope so. Okay, and that's twinkle, twinkle, little star or A, B, C, D, E, F, G, depending on how you, you hear that. And this is using the C scale. If we look at this, um, I'm going to put a little text box on here, maybe just for a minute. Um, if we think about the C scale, then the C is note number one, right? And then the next one is note number one. And this would be note number five in the scale. 
right? And note number five and note number six and six. And can you do this with me? Five. I'm not going to make you all jump on with microphones, but if you're engaged, you'll start going, aha, I see a pattern here. CDEF, it's note number four in the scale. Note number four, E is three. And D is two and, two and one again, just like that. Okay. Now, here's the really cool thing. If we, that's one, one, five, five, six, six, five, four, four, three, three, two, two, one. We can just take those numbers and encode them into any scale and we'll get the same sound. So there's what I played. I went. All right, so I want you to think about the D scale for a minute. And I'm going to switch cameras. So if you have 11556654433221 written down or memorized, that would be good. I'm going to stop sharing that. I'm going to come back over here. And I'm going to use this right here. Let's spell our D scale. Okay, D scale. D major scale has, and this is stuff you should have memorized at your fingertips. The, just that your brain has two sharps, and that's an F sharp and a C sharp. Yes. I hope everybody's going, yeah, this is easy. We got this. Okay. And I would be going like D, E, F sharp, G, A, B, C sharp, and D. Remember, sharps raise the note a half step or move it down your fingerboard one note or one fret. So here's my fingerboard and here's my F right there. If I wanted to play F sharp, I'd just move it to there, right? Here's my C. If I wanted to play C sharp, I'd just go like that right there. Here's another C and like that, in case you're wondering, right? So if I want to play, um, twinkle, twinkle, little star, or A, B, C, D, E, F, G, using the D scale, then I would go one, one, right? Five, five, six, six, five, four, four, three, three, two, two, one, like that. And it will sound the same, although higher, because it's one note higher, right? And then G, G, F sharp, F sharp, E, E. I can do this on any scale. If I want to do it on a, let's pick another one. Hold on. Um, let's pick the A scale. So three sharps, right? F sharp, G sharp, and C sharp. It's the wrong order, but there they are. So I'll go A, B, C sharp, D, E, F sharp, G sharp, and A. And I'm going to go one, one. Five five six six five four four three three two two one, and so I can play that. It's going to be much higher on this instrument, but it'll be right. Okay, and so on. All right. Using a scale means to be in the key of the scale. Whenever you hear somebody say like, what key are we in? What they're talking about is what scale are you using? Okay, so key equals scale. And you name it by the first note of the scale. Okay, so if I'm in the key of F, I'm using an F scale. If I'm in the key of D, I'm using a D scale. If I'm in the key of A, I'm using an A scale. And, and that's home. That's why this bum 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 feels like home, right? One feels like home. And the reason that is is because of where the half steps are, they always push us back here. And that's true for chords as well. So if you think about Lavender's Blue, okay? Lavender's Blue was using, what were the chords? C, F, and G. And it starts on C and it does this stuff, but it always keeps coming back to there, right? So it's like, um, 
Lavender's blue, dilly dilly, F chord. Love, G chord. Vendor's green, right? And at the very end, it's like, who told you so, dilly dilly, or it was my own heart, sorry, dilly dilly, that told me so, and you can feel that it really wants to end up on the chord that's built on the first degree of the scale, because we're in the C scale or we're in the key of C. C in the scale is home. This is a way, this is also a way, but wants to push us back there. Every scale degree and chord that goes with it has a name and a function, okay? So one is home, okay? And it has a fancy name called the tonic, but you don't need to know that for this class, but one is home, right? It's where we start, it's where we come back to at the end. If we don't, it feels really weird. If I go like one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and I stop there. Everybody should be mad at me, right? Because <laughs> it's not done. Or if I get to seven and I miss and don't hit one and I do it wrong, let's see if I can do that. Seven and... Oh, wait, it didn't, it doesn't fulfill. Like I went to a chord that wasn't even in the, even in the key. They want to push back to one. There's always this, I'd like to be at home on my favorite chair, right? Watching my favorite Netflix or whatever's comfortable for you. I'd like to be on the pickleball court with my favorite racket and my friends, whatever is like standard. That's you right there. Okay. Now you can reduce all these songs down to numbers really so lavender's blue if you think about it i'm going to just pop back over to that electronic file that i had um up right there and show you what i mean okay so um this right here is my c scale the top line the bottom note is C, D, E, F, G, A, B, and C. And I've built myself a triad on the first degree of the scale, C, and I'm in the key of C, there's home. F is one, two, three, the four chord, and then five. Now, maybe I shouldn't have put, uh, maybe I shouldn't have put this note on here yet. I'll take it off right there because you can extend chords upwards and it's something that I kind of wanted to, to talk about but uh, maybe maybe we'll get to that later there's my g chord right there one scale degree so we call it the one chord two three four so f is the four chord and then five is the g chord one two three four five now there are two chords and three chords and six chords and seven chords and this is eight again and they all have a function okay they all do things but one you are my sunshine, my only sunshine. You make me, I got to go away somewhere, happy. So I'm going to go to my four chord, which is F. Happy when skies are. Let's go back to home. Gray C chord, right? You'll never know, dear. Hopefully you can hear that's the F chord again. How much I love you, C chord, right? Please don't take my going to the G chord sunshine away we can do that in any key or any scale that we know what the one chord and the four chord and the five chord would be and by the way the qualities will be the same if it's a major chord in one key on the one key on the one chord or the four chord or stuff like that it'll be the same everywhere else so let's uh Let's take a look at this here. Um, I'm gonna just pop these sevenths right off here just so we don't have to look at them right now. You can extend the, the chord higher, but we don't wanna, we don't wanna deal with that right now. So I think that'll be optional shift delete, I think. Yeah, there we go. All right, so this is my, have a look. Next line is a G scale right here, or the key of G. There's a G on the bottom, an A, a B, a C, a D, an E, an F sharp and a G, 
Okay, so if I wanted to do you are my sunshine in the key of G or using the G scale instead of the C scale, then my one chord will now be, hmm, why don't you take a moment and actually type this into chat if, you, if it's possible for you to see if you got the right answer. My one chord would be a, uh, maybe I'll, uh, I'll show chat as well. Somebody be brave. G. Yeah, good. It was the five chord, but now it's a G chord. My four chord will be a right there. One, two, three, four. Anybody got three brave people? Somebody else, maybe? C. Good. Yeah. And then my five chord will be the D chord. Now I'll let you in on a secret. Your five chord can be a major triad or it can be a, when we said like D7 or C7, right? That's also another form that can be if you add another note on top but let me show you so i was c chord you are my sunshine and all that kind of stuff now i'm going to go to g chord now here's the result of playing in the g scale my chords will be different my notes will be different although they'll be on the same note numbers of the scales but it will be higher or lower because g is e here's my c here's my g right bum bum or bum bum if I want to go down. So why would I change uh, the scale and the key that I'm in? Maybe it's to accommodate my voice. Maybe I'm really unhappy in the key of C going, you make me happy and that's really too high and my voice is gonna go more like, you make me happy and it's like, no, I can't do that, right? So I take that down. Now I'm, this is home now, my G chord. And I'm singing down here. You are my sunshine, my only sunshine. You make me. So I'm going to my four chord, that's C now. Make me happy when skies are gray. You'll never know, dear, how much I love you. Please don't take my five chord is D, seven or D. Sunshine away. I can't help it, but I gotta say, thank you very much, right? So, right? Or I could pick somewhere in the middle, like, hmm, well, did I put it on here? I don't think so. It's not on here, but let's, let's, let's figure this out on our own. What if I wanted to do this in the key of A? Okay, I'm gonna switch cameras here. I'm gonna go back, stop the share, go back to here. My A scale's right there. Can you figure out what my chord should be really quickly? If you don't want to type it in, oh, that doesn't matter this time. But if you're getting this, then you know that you're looking at the scale and you're looking for notes one, four, and five because You Are My Sunshine is a one, four, five chord uh, song, right? So that means that I'm going to play for my one chord, the A chord right there. And for my four chord, one, two, three, four, the D chord right there, and for my five chord, E right there. And like I said, keep the qualities the same. We know that the one chord in a major scale or a major key is gonna be a major chord. So I'm gonna do an A major chord right there, followed by a D major chord for my four chord, right? It's my one, it's my four, and then an E major chord. And I'm gonna let you in on a secret. Five chords can be major chords or they can be um, seven chords. And we're going to talk in depth about what the different qualities of sevenths and things like that are in the second half of the term. So don't worry too much about why yet. It's a triad with a seventh and they have to be the right distance apart, just like the right distance apart for the notes of a major or a minor triad. And we'll, we'll, you'll get really good at these, but either of those will be fine. So. Now, here I'll be in the key of A. So I start on an A chord. You are my... So this is not... A is one step higher than G. So it's still going to be nice and low for my voice, but not quite so low, right? So instead of... You are my sunshine, it's going to be... You are my sunshine. That feels nice and comfortable for me. You are my sunshine, my only sunshine. You make me four chord happy when skies are gray. 
You'll never know, dear, how much I love you. Please don't take my, I'm going to my five chord font sunshine. That's my E7 right there, away, oh, right? If you're a guitar player, you've seen people put capos on their instrument, which is like changing where the location of the nut is so they can use simplified chords, but it changes key or uh, the key of the instrument, right? So that, um, so that it accommodates that. And that's really what's happening there is you're shifting the length of the strings overall. So you're changing the home tuning of the instrument. But as we get better and better and learn, learn how to do movable guitar shapes and things, and they, they exist on the ukulele as well, then you can just you know think about this in any, any place and do this. We can take any song and find a section of it and just do it in that key. And, and any key, we can encode it down to those things. Okay, um, I'm going to give you um, I'm going to give you a really bad explanation of chord function. So we we understand that we use a scale. From that scale, we derive our melodies, but also our harmonies. And it seems like the one chord or the chord that's built on the first degree of the scale and the five chord and we honorable mention to the four are really important, right? So. Let me give you like, um, hmm, without getting into two years of music theory and then grad school on, on why and what, a guideline that you can use. One is home. You get that, right? Four or others are stuff, right? And five is like besties to one, okay? Which always go back to one. Okay, they guard one, you don't get to talk to one. This is like a, a celebrity, this is their best friend and like bodyguard, right? And anybody wants to give this person stuff, it all goes through there and there. That's one way of thinking about it. Or I like to think of it like this. It's a hamburger. One is the patty. Okay, you're gonna, this is crazy. You won't find this in a textbook anywhere, but you'll never forget this. And Five is the bun, right? Okay. You got to have the one chord, the hamburger, or the soy protein substitute, or chicken, or whatever you want. It's fine. Okay. Um, and you got to have the bun to make uh, uh, some music, right? And then it's not that the other chords are not important. They are the other things in the hamburger. Like, just type into chat, what's your favorite thing on a hamburger? besides the bun and the burger. And if you don't like hamburgers, it's fine. But if you do like hamburgers, volunteer that up. Like what makes it the best hamburger? What's the next thing that's most important on the hamburger? Is it, is it ketchup? Okay. Is it cheese? Is it pickles? Oh, let's do this. <laughs> How many people think that tomatoes are important on a hamburger. Do you know how to do thumbs up and thumbs down in chat? There's a place. If you do this on the side here, uh, wait, in, in chat itself, you can, I think in chat, you can give like reactions on the bottom. You can give like thumbs up and thumbs down, right? Kind of thing. Um, it's not that this is not important. Like, and it's not that the other chords are not important. They're really important. They change the way that the flavor of the whole thing goes, right? But it's all held together by the fact that you've got a piece of protein and a bun uh, or some acceptable substitute, a wrap, a piece of lettuce, something like that. So some people will just say, absolutely must have pickles and onions. Like they want the full thing. Other people will say, it's not really any good unless there's bacon. Right. And chord progressions or groups of chords that make songs are very much like the popular ones that we use are very much like popular recipes for hamburgers. So if you think of four chord as cheese, that's probably the first upgrade you get when you buy a hamburger is they'll put cheese on it for a nominal cost because it's like everybody seems to like it or most people like it if they like hamburgers. Right. And then you have all the other accoutrements. So let's think about another song for a second here. Um, uh, 
if I put this up on the internet, will we get caught for a copyright infringement? Maybe. I don't care. We'll see. Okay. So I'm going, well, you done done me and you bet I felt it. I tried to be chill, but you're so hot that I melted. I fell right through the cracks. Now I'm trying to get back. Okay, so that's, um, goes on. I won't hesitate no more, no more. This is our fate. I'm yours. Okay, so that's Jason Mraz. I'm yours. Okay. And just so you know, that's a one chord followed by a five chord. Okay. Followed by a let's see uh, a six chord followed by a four chord and finally comes back to the one chord like that all right and you need to know a little more like six chords are minor chords right but if i was in the key of c and i wanted to play that then this would be a c major chord and can you guess ahead of me this would be a g major chord now Here's where I'm going to loop back and say that it's nice to be able to spell a scale, but to get really good and useful at, at having these scales, you to be able to jump into the middle of the scale and say, what's note number six? That's where you start to know your scale. So I want you to think about the C scale. What's note number six? I'll give you a second. You don't have to type it in chat. But if you go, well, G is five, you don't have to count up from, from, from C, right? It's an A. So the answer is I used an A minor chord there. And then what's the four chord or the chord that's four? It's F, right? And then back to there. And by the way, that's a recipe that we really like. Because if you're the Beatles and you go, when I find myself in times of trouble, Mama Mary comes to me. They're doing Let It Be. It's too high for me right there. Paul McCartney and his dang tenor voice. When I find myself in G chord and A minor chord and F chord. So Jason Mraz copied it. And you better believe he knew that song. Singing words of wisdom, let it be. It's one, six, one, five, six, four, one. And copying chords is not plagiarism. It's not copyrightable. There's a limited, that's like saying because somebody else makes a cheeseburger, they can, they can, you know, one and four and five that I can't make a cheeseburger. Of course I can make a cheeseburger. That's not copyrighted. Okay. So chord progressions are not copyrighted. Tunes, maybe grooves and feels that are complex um, and certainly lyrics and, you know, those kind of things are copyrightable, but that's it right there. And if it was in the wrong key, I could switch keys, change different scales so that it's easier to play on the instrument because some keys are harder to play on instruments than others, or it's better for my voice or it's better for all numbers of kinds of things. In fact, complex songs that go on for a long time will do the music in one scale and key, right? Key of whatever, and then they'll change and they'll do it on another one and another one and another one. So if you're interested in hearing that, um, I, I'm not going to bring it up right now because I don't want it to get into this and in, uh, this uh, video and get us copyright strict. But if you look up I Walk the Line by Johnny Cash, okay, every verse is in a different key or uses a different scale. And it goes away from the original key and wanders through another key and another key. And then it starts to come back through those keys until it finally comes back to the original key again. So every verse is actually in a different key, right? So there you go. All right. Well, have we exhausted that? I hope so. I hope this burger bun thing really is actually useful for you. If you want to start thinking about um, like writing music, okay, of your own, then it's probably fine to think of it that way. Like let's build a song right now. Okay, we're gonna build a song. I'm gonna put it in the key of C so that everybody understands that. Okay, your choices are one at the beginning. Okay, and at the end, hold it all together. 
is the five chord. Okay, and that's fine. And we could go like, down in the valley, valley so low. That's my five chords camp song, right? Hang your head over. Hear the wind blow. That's it, whole song. This is my childhood right there, sitting around at family reunions, having the uncles play guitars and things like that, and and ones and five chords. But let's let's make it a little more complex than that. We'll make our own song. Um, let's pick common chords. We can use the four chord as cheese. You can use the two chord, that's pickles, and you can use the six chord, that's onions, okay? And don't think too hard about this. Just, I'm on my one chord, and I've got this strum and this feel. What's my next chord? Somebody type something. Two, four, or six. Anybody? I'll sit here for a long time. Two, okay, two, we got two for. Now, I know that two chords are minor. That's something you'll learn in time. And I have a, I have, um, I have knowledge of what chords go well next, just like I know how to build a really good grilled cheese sandwich and I know what goes into that and what pairs well with it, okay? So what we know about this is that we can either stop and say, I didn't mean that and go back to one. Or if we want to keep going forward, two pretty much goes to five. So there's my two, D minor. What's my five chord? It's a G. And one. Five likes to go to one. Okay. So, um, so we are going to write a song about, I have a cat. He is kind of dumb. But it's not his fault, cause he's just getting older. I went back to my one, right? I said I'm not ready yet. He's just really old and not so spry anymore. So we forgive him. Um, I'm ready to finish my line. A lot of things, except when he can't figure out how to use the litter box. Now my chorus, I'm gonna go to four. Cheese galore. Yeah, or when he doesn't figure out how to use a litter box, we throw him outside all day long. He only gets, I'm gonna go to my six chord, one meal on that day, and I'm gonna go to my four chord, cause we like to say, oh, come on, cat, just figure it out. And I'm back, right? So you can come up with better lyrics than that. I just made that one up, right? And usually the notes that you sing or write match up with the notes of the chord. They connect those notes. If you sing notes that are not part of the chord for a long time, it just sounds like you're singing wrong notes because chords and, and melody notes go together. If you don't believe me, go back and look at Lavender's Blue or Cuddle Doon, and you'll note that the majority of the time the note that you're singing or playing in the melody matches up with what's going on in the chord. And if not, it quickly goes there, right? The more you play outside or away from the chord, the more you start to sound like jazz or something modern, okay? That's belligerent. Anyhow, burger, one chord, bun, five chord, all the other stuff really important on how it all tastes, right? And of course, you can, you can do weird things when you get, you know, to be a master chef. And there are some standard recipes or progressions of chords that, that uh, go from one to the other. All right. Wow. 938, well, 9, 940. So here's what we have to do. Uh, we have to uh, get you ready to test each other on the scales. I hope that, that everybody was able to prepare for today by learning their basic scales. This was a long time ago, we started that. So, you know, I'm hoping that's good. Let's, uh, let me look over here at uh, Google Chrome. I'm in our class, I'm in here. Here's our day-to-day. -day. And if you look, there was a, a form that you should have downloaded. You're gonna test each other. I'm gonna put you into a breakout room with like two or three other people. 
right? And here's what you're going to do. You're going to have this form or it's on today's agenda, like days. So if you don't have it, you could quickly go and make this, right? Digitally, but you're going to test each other, right? You're going to randomize your flashcards for these scales. That's the no sharp scale, no flat scale, the first three sharps, the first three flats, right? Randomize them and show them, show them to somebody else. I'm going to minimize this so that you can see the screen better. Okay. Right. So if I were doing that, I'd be like, uh, well, let's see if I can find some. I, you know, I'd, I'd hold up that and I'd say, what's this scale? And they would, they would describe it for you. And, and, uh, you know, that's enough. You don't have to spell every note. So it, let's say they found the E flat scale. You pull up the E flat scale, you show them that, and they go, E flat scale has three flats. Those flats are B flat, E flat, and A flat. Okay. So the number of flats and what they are. Now, if it's a lot of sharps or flats, then they do the summary, but that's not going to happen here. Yeah. Okay. A scale. Well, it's got three sharps, F sharp, C sharp, and, and G sharp. Right. Okay. And you just keep track for them. Right. It's like if they can do it accurately and well in like three or four seconds, perfect. Just check it off. But then say, well, were there any that they didn't know? They had to like look to the side and go like, um, you know, somebody up in heaven, please help me. What's this? I can't remember what it is. If it takes longer than three seconds, but they get it, then keep track of that. Or if they have some factually incorrect information, the stuff that's on the inside of the flashcard, then keep track of that. Okay. That's what you're doing. You're testing each other. You can share the results with them afterwards. Okay. And then when you've done that, okay, right there, then you're going to go over here to this reporting test right there. And the reporting test is really simple. It's a uh, preview it for you. You say, who did you test? Right? Write down their name. I tested Jewel Iwasa because sometimes there's duplicate names in the class. Okay. And you don't need to write it. You could write like, and he was uh, difficult to work with. No, don't actually do that, okay? You don't have to do that. Just their name. I need to know you tested. And then it says, well, how many of those scales did they get correctly? He got all six of them right. No problems whatsoever. Did he stutter, stumble on one? Yeah, he actually stumbled on one. It was C, which was really weird because that's the easy one. And then, you know, if did he have any problems knowing what they were? Like, did he know the number of sharps in something but couldn't name the sharps or knew the order of sharps, but didn't know the D had two sharps. And then finally, just report on yourself. Um, just this, did you feel like you were fairly tested, right? Um, in other words, this is a chance if you feel like the people in your room ganged up on you and were mean, you can say, they all said, said they were going, were going to lie about me and give me a bad report, you know, a report. I don't feel safe. Most people are fine. But if you do feel like you were unjustly whatevered, you can tell me about that. Now, you don't get any points if you get them all right or wrong, but it is a way for me to check and see where you're at and for you to check and see where you're at. If you are tested, how would you do on those? Okay. So that's what we're doing today. More than that, we're also doing one other thing. Two weeks from now, so let's let's go. Today, you come into Zoom. That's working, okay? Next week, we have another Zoom class on Friday where you're going to test each other on your notes on your ukuleles. So you're going to hold up your, your note flashcards and say, what's this note? Play it for me, okay? And we'll do a similar kind of reporting thing. And then the following week is midterm exams, which includes you doing a one-on-one -on -one Zoom with me where you have to play some things, some scales, some chords, uh, Kudal Dune and Lavender's Blue. You get to do those live for me again, right? So preparation, making videos now is really important. Um, but, but we're also making sure today that you can get on Zoom and you can, your camera and your microphone work, right? Next week, we're getting on Zoom and you're gonna make sure that you, your ukulele is picked up by your microphone and that all works just fine. And then the following week you have live as well as some on canvas written um, Zoom 
uh, like midterm with me personally. So in addition to testing you on these things, we're just making sure your gear or technology works well. Okay. Okay. So flashcards form, or if you don't have the form quickly, you know, pull that up so you can write it out. Uh, basically, do they know it? Can they tell you how many flats or sharps and what those are? Or does it take them a little time or are there any that they didn't get right? Okay. And what I think you should do is if I put three or four of you in a room together, you just test the other person. You go around like that, kind of round robin. And then you go out and you report on how the other person did. And if you felt like your testing was, was fair. I don't care if you get one wrong today, but we want to make sure that you know where you're at being tested because they're not that hard with a little work uh, and preparation and maybe a, a mock test like this, you, you'll be able to do these really, really well. Okay. All right. I'm going to put you in breakout rooms now, if I can remember how to do that. And now oh, there we are. And it looks like we have 15 people. Um, maybe that includes me. So 14 people. I'm going to put you in three per room. That means there's going to be one room with just two people. And again, you don't have to be tested twice, but just round robin test. Okay. So I'm going to make four, three, four breakout rooms. Yes. Okay. And I'm going to assign automatically. And what's going to happen is you just test. If somebody has to bail to go do something else really quickly, say, look, I got another thing I got to go to. Jewel talk too long, right? Let me go first. Be kind to each other, but, but report honestly and make sure they know how they did. And everybody should agree on that. Uh, when you're done that, you do not need to come back into here. You can just check right out and go. However, I will stay here online if you have a question or a concern about that. Okay. Be nice to each other. I will see you again next week for more, more Zooming. I really hope this was helpful for you, that it made sense and uh, that you're excited about the fact that as you integrate chords and scales together, you can decode and recode songs like that. It's a very exciting time to, to say, I got some scales, but I know what to do with them. All right, you're going into break rooms. Like I said, if you have a question or something or a concern, pop back out afterwards. But if not, then I'll just see your videos coming up. Have a great weekend. Thanks for coming to class and open all the rooms.